Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. I encourage you to follow in your own Bibles. Uh, if you brought a Bible with you, if not, uh, you've got uh, ones in the pews there that are available to you that will also be up on the screen. Uh, you're welcome to read on your phone, your tablet, uh, whatever you like to use to study during the week. And if you don't have a Bible, or if you prefer to read on tablet, you don't know a good uh, app to use, uh, please let me know. I'd love to be able to get the scripture into your hands in whatever way uh, you best read it. So here God's word this morning. One day he, Jesus, got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us go to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. The windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing! And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We pray with you. Almighty God, to open up your word this morning, we ask that you to speak to us. Whatever it is we need to hear, God, you know best. You know our lives, you know what we're going through, you know what we struggle with, you know what's weighed us down and what we've overcome. So send your Holy Spirit deep inside of each of us and speak to us at the point of our need. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Speak to us, God. Use whatever words I may offer, but you speak to us that we know and do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We've been talking over the last few weeks about the storms that we face in life. <coughs> Some of them that are of our own creation, others that are of the decisions that others have made, and, and a variety of circumstances in between. Some things within our control, others beyond our control. Circumstances of health, of finances, of employment, of our culture. Different things can whip up storms seemingly out of nowhere in the midst of our lives. We've been talking about what it means to follow God through those times, to be faithful to Him, to fix our eyes on Him. And we've talked about His love for us. And if you didn't uh, last week, take one of these Father's love letters home with you and read through it. It's uh, got scripture about what God feels for you, about His love for you. I encourage you to read that and share it with somebody else in your life this week. But one of the things about the storms is that God can also use them to remind us of where He is and to refine and shape us in the midst of the storm. In our scripture this morning, Jesus says, uh, been going through the whole region of Galilee. They've been going town to town. They've been uh, preaching in one place and then another and then another. He's been teaching. He's been healing. He's been casting out demons. He's been uh, performing miracles. And they keep moving to new areas so that more and more people can understand who Jesus is. And so coming into this uh, and, and, and we see in other parts of this gospel, and the gospel of Mark and other places, uh, just how much this is wearing down on Jesus and the disciples at times. And so they get ready to move on to their next area. Jesus says, you know, let's get in the boat. Let's go to the other side of the lake. There's some people over there we need to go see next. And so they get into the boat, and Jesus goes to the back of the boat and falls asleep. Maybe this is uh, a picture of his humanity here. We know that Jesus is fully human and fully divine, and so both of these are uh, a core to who he is, and so maybe we're seeing his weariness here. Maybe we're seeing uh, the fact that, you know, in the creation story, God, even, who has certainly no weakness, stops to rest on the seventh day. So maybe we're seeing an echo. 
But whatever the case, he goes to the boat, he lays down, and he falls asleep. And all of a sudden, this storm whips up out of nowhere. There's a lot of theories about this storm. There's some uh, thought that because of the, the geography of the area that uh, the Sea of Galilee is, is prone to storms like this popping up, uh, that this is a, a common occurrence there. There are other thoughts that this is maybe more, uh, less of a natural occurrence and more of a supernatural occurrence. This was the uh, spiritual forces that were working against Jesus, uh, trying to take a shot at him uh, to stop him from getting to the cross, from getting to the point of his journey here. There's not a lot of clarity in the scripture about which kind of storm this is. There's some hints here and there that people have pointed to, but uh, it's not uh, really Luke's point in sharing this to give us that background. But the storm comes up out of nowhere, and we know that at least four of these disciples have some uh, experience with ships and with storms. We've got uh, Peter, Andrew, James, and John are all professional fishermen, and so uh, you know they're trying their best to keep this boat afloat, but it's hit the point where this storm is so bad that they are terrified that they are going to die. We started our series with uh, a later incident uh, that is very similar to this, where Jesus was, uh, walks on the water to them in the midst of a, a similar level storm. But they come to Jesus, and, and, and they've done everything they can, and they come to him, and he is sound asleep still, despite all of the crashing, all of the storming, all of everything that's going on, all of their efforts to keep this boat afloat, Jesus is asleep. Any of y'all have that person in your life that's a heavy sleeper? You know somebody, maybe you are that somebody, I see fingers being pointed. Yeah, a lot of people are volunteering their, uh, their, their spouses and roommates here. Um, and it's always fun when you've got somebody who's a heavy sleeper and somebody who's a light sleeper. Uh, and, and the heavy sleeper won't wake up for anything. I'm that in my family. I sleep very soundly. My wife doesn't always. I, I sleep so soundly that, that, that from what I've been told, now I, I was asleep through this, so I don't know the truth of this or not, but during a youth lock-in in high school, that man wants to run. During a youth lock-in in high school, we were sleeping on the pews. I know, shocking thought, right? Somebody sleeping on the pews at church. Um, we were sleeping on the pews during the lock-in, and I was so sound asleep that I was being beat with pillows and did not wake up. It's plausible. Jesus is that sound asleep in the back of the boat. In spite of all the chaos, all the craziness that's going on, he is out. And the disciples come, and they wake him, and, and they're shouting, Master, Master, we are dying. Do something. Maybe they're warning him, maybe they're asking him to do something. It doesn't really finish that call. It just says, Master, we are dying. We are perishing. And so Jesus wakes up, and he speaks to the wind of the waves, and he rebukes them. This lends some credit to the more spiritual origin of the storm, maybe. He rebukes them. He calls them out and says, stop, be still, be calm. And the sea goes like glass, calm. No wind, no storm, no rain, no night. Back to a normal, average day on the water. And Jesus looks at them and says to them, where is your faith? I've wondered about this for a long time. Why does he give them that particular question? I mean, the fact is, they came to him, right? You would think that would be the faithful response. You would think, okay, we've tried everything else. We've tried every trick we know as fishermen, as sailors. We have done everything that we can. Let's go to Jesus now. So why does he rebuke them? 
I think in part, the question here about their faith it has to do with the nature of the way in which they're coming to you. They're coming in a panic. They're shouting at them. Master, Master, we are going to die. They're asking out of panic, fear, worry. Instead of out of trust. They're not coming to him in a, Jesus, we need you to move. We need you to act. There's all this going on around us. There's all this chaos. There's all this storm. We know you are the one who can overcome all of this. So help us. Instead, they're coming in panic. They're coming in fear. Maybe that's the part. You ever go to Jesus in a panic? You ever go it alone at the end of your rope? There's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> but where is your heart at? Is it trusting that God has the answers you need? Or are you seeking him as a last person? Because you don't know what else to do. Maybe there's more to it than that. Because think about this. The disciples know to varying degrees who they're with. They're kind of all kind of working through that process. And it's clear by the end of this that they're still not entirely sure who Jesus is. But here is with them the Son of God. The Savior of the world, the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah. And he's got a mission to fulfill. He's got a cross to get to. Let me ask you this. If God has a plan, if God has a purpose, if God has a mission, is any old thunderstorm going to undermine God? No. <laughs> it was not news to him. I full on believe Jesus knew when he got on that boat what was coming. And is God going to let his son sink to the bottom of a lake when he's there to save the world? I don't think so. So maybe some of the faith was about the way in which they approached him. And maybe it is just, look, you are in the company of God right now. Have some faith that God's going to take care. That he will care for you. They thought they were going to die. So at some level or another, they were not trusting. And they learned from this. By the time they get to the next storm, as we saw at the beginning of this series, they're no longer asking, who is this? That even the wind and waves obey. Peter's stepping out of a boat in the middle of a lake because he knows who this is that he's traveling with. And they're praising God by the end of it. So let me ask you when life's storms come on you, it may take a lot of people. There's a lot of people riled up about what's going on in general conference right now. You read on Facebook, Twitter, all those places, you got some really panicked people out there. We go through our own challenges. Running short on finances. Job changes. Moves. Family crises. How are we coming to God? Are we panicked? Or are we 
we trusting? Are we afraid? Or do we have our sure hope in the one who is Lord over every story in all creation? You know what you're facing. You know what's going on in your life. Maybe this is a calm period for you. Maybe there is no, there are no challenges, there are no worries, there are no struggles. Or maybe you're in the middle of a stormy week. I want you this morning to lay it all before God. We're going to take a few minutes to pray, and uh, just if you wouldn't mind, just give us a little bit of background music as we do. I want you right where you are, or you can come up to the front and kneel down at the rails. I want you to put into God's hands everything that will reach you. Everything that's got you afraid. Every struggle. Every storm. Put it into his hands. Give him the fear, the anxiety, the worry, the fretting. Put your full trust in you. You're welcome to come down and kneel here and pray. If you want me to come and pray with you, just lift up your hand and I'll come and pray with you. So let's seek the Lord together. Let's Forgive us when we have been so focused on the wind and the waves that we have not seen you right there with us, sitting there in the boat. 